Hello, hockey fans, and welcome to NHL Draft Pros. The NHL Draft Lottery is fast approaching. It's about a month away. And so on today's video, we're going to do a little Tankathon simulation. It's a great website. Go check it out at tankathon.com. They have all of the top sports where it keeps you up to date on all the lotteries and it shows you team records, who has the highest odds, whatnot. It's a great website, so go check that out. And then we're going to do a little mock from Tankathon, which is a lot of fun. So stick around and enjoy the show. And if you want any scouting reports on all, all the prospects for the 2024 NHL Draft, check that out at NHL Draft Pros on YouTube. And please subscribe, hit that like button. We are approaching 7,000 followers. Help me hit that number. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so like I said, Tankathon, they have all of the updated projections for who's going where in the NHL. It's amazing. And look at this. It even has the odds and who's going to go first overall or who's going to get first overall, I guess you could say. So we're going to do three spins in this video, and we're going to see where we end up. So the first spin we do here. All right, so Anaheim ends up with the first overall pick. Kind of redemption for last year, and San Jose drops down to two, Chicago to three. So that's a pretty fun one. All right, let's see what happens in the next spin here. Ooh, San Jose remains the top spot, and Anaheim hops ahead of Chicago. So Chicago third overall, the rest stay the same. So no real action here. So this is it, the third one. Let's see where we end up with this one. Oh, boom, here we go. Calgary with a huge jump, up seven positions. Wow. And then Anaheim goes up one, San Jose down two, Chicago down two, Columbus, Arizona, Montreal, and Ottawa all drop by one. So this is pretty interesting. So, okay, let's now. So they do the mock on here too. So you can see the players that have been already positioned. So we got Macklin Celebrini at number one going to Calgary. And look at this. Now, what does Calgary need? Well, you know, I'd say they probably need a D. They got some pretty good youngsters in the system like Coronado, Hanzik, Zari. But, I mean, it doesn't matter who you're taking. You're taking Macklin Celebrini. And he is just doing some phenomenal things right now at BU in the playoffs and actually help them get to the Frozen Four, which is going to be happening in Minnesota soon. So, you know what? Celebrini, if you watch my videos, he is a great 200-foot player. He's got some offensive upside, can shoot a puck and pass a puck, great at zone entries, uh, responsible defensively. So this is going to be a great pickup for Calgary. I mean, come on. Anytime you pick up a high-level prospect like Macklin Celebrini, you're going to be happy. So they jump up seven positions and land big, bad Max Celebrini. All right, number two now, Anaheim. They've moved up a little bit, and they are going to land Ivan Demidoff. Now, Anaheim, you know, what best available, I think, is what they need right now, and they're getting a dynamic, dynamic forward in Ivan Demidoff. Look at that, 60 points in 30 games in the MHL, and he's just having fun in the playoffs right now as well. This kid oozes oozes with talent when the puck's on his stick like the, look at this little toe drag release here he definitely can uh you know dangle with the puck i guess you could say he's got some sweet hands scoring touch off the charts especially in close uh you know with the goalie and the defense and stuff like that so he's gonna be fun to watch for sure and anaheim you're gonna get a little redemption from missing out on bedard last year and get a really highly rated Prospect. All right. Number three, we got the San Jose Sharks, and they are going to land Lefshinov, Artyom Lefshinov. You know what? Actually, San Jose does need some work on the defensive end. You know, they got some decent forwards, like they landed Will Smith, and they got, you know, Eklund and Musty, and a couple of young players. So, you know what? Landing a D or best available, I guess you could say, but they're going to get Artyom Lefshinov, and he's a highly touted D. Plays for Michigan State. He's got 35, had 35 points in 37 games. And this is a big mobile D. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call him a, an offensive defenseman. He he's he's you know responsible two-way defenseman, but he can put up points. Obviously, he's almost got a point a game in his draft year in the NCAA. So that's pretty impressive in itself. Now watch these uh, highlights here. This is where he is big, likes to take the body. He's good defensively, skates really well. So yeah, San Jose is landing a nice, nice top prospect in Artyom Levshanov. All right, number four, we got Caden Lidstrom, the big power forward out of the dub, and he's going to Chicago. What? That's a pretty nice pickup for Chicago. Uh, they'll probably best available player at the draft, 
And this lines up nice with Connor Bedard, and you got Moore and Nazar, Rinzel, Reichel. I mean, you know, they got some pretty young, decent young players right now, and Lindstrom's going to fit in well. Now, look at these numbers. He's got 46 points in 32 games. Got hurt in December, came back. He's in the playoffs right now, and he's already picking it up, and he's dominating right now in the playoffs. And look at this. This is I wanted to show. I show this clip all the time. For those of you who don't watch my channel, Caden Lindstrom is a power forward. Look at that. He's got a guy draped all over him, and he still manages to go top shelf on this goalie. So, yeah, he's a fun one to watch. Um, I'm going to put be putting a video out on him soon. I wanted to wait for the playoffs to get some more clips of him, see how he uh, bounced back from from injury, coming back from an injury in December. But, man, let me tell you, he is putting up some points already in the playoffs. So he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the near future. And Chicago lands a beauty. All right, number five, look at this. It is Columbus, and they ended up with Cole Eiserman. Wow. Now, Columbus, they need a, some help on the forward end. Their defense are pretty stacked. They got, you know, David Yerchek. That Matejchuk, Wierenski, Bean, Provera. they got some pretty good D. So, you know what? Landing a nice forward, someone like Cole Eisenman is a pretty sweet pickup. And you know what Cole Eisenman does? He scores goals. 48 goals in 45 games with the NTDP, the junior U.S. team. And he is a shooter. Let me tell you something. Best shooter in this draft for sure. And if you look at the highlights, I got a video on him too. And watch this one-timer. Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! He can wire a puck. Let me tell you something. Cole Eisenman, he's got a nose for the net, and he's got a great, great shot. You know, Matthews-like, I guess, they, you know, people have been comparing him to. He can shoot. I've seen him live plenty of times, and let me tell you something. It is the real deal when he shoots that puck. So, yeah, this is a great pickup by Columbus, and he'll match up nice with Ken Johnson. Ken Johnson's more of a passer, so this is going to be a – Match made in heaven, I guess you could say. So that's a great pickup by Columbus. Cool eyes are men. All right, moving on. We got number six, and it is the Arizona Coyotes. And they end up with Sam Dickinson, one of the top D in this draft for sure. And I mean, you know what? From last year's draft, they had Simashev and Daniel Butt. And so now, you know what? You're picking up one of the top D in, the, in this draft. And he had 70 points in 68 games for London in the OHL. And let me tell you something, this kid is very good defensively. He's a big body, likes to take the body. He's got a big shot from the point. Watch this, slash out, boom. Ah. Yeah, so he is a great pickup. He can skate well. I really like Sam Dickinson a lot, and I've had a chance to see him a few times in the OHL. So Arizona, you're you're loading up your D there. You got J.J. Moser and Dersey and Valimaki and actually um, Shemeshev, Lamoureux. So they got a good bunch of young D in the system already and, you know, some good young players like Cooley. So I like this pickup a lot by Arizona. And that is the next pick. So now moving on. Number seven, the Habs. They finally get into the picture here, drop down one. And what do they need? Well, you know what? They got some pretty stacked D, actually. The the Montreal Canadiens, I like their D core, the young D. They got Ryan Backer and Hudson and Mayu. And, and you know, and then you got, you know, Jack Eye and Matheson. So what do they need? They need a pretty good forward, and they're going to land someone who is high-end talent. High-end talent, Berkeley Cat. Look at these points. 116 points in 68 games in the dub. That is pretty impressive for the youngster. And let me tell you something. He's got some magic hands. Look at these clips. You're going to see a couple of clips here. I got a video out on him right now. So if you want to check out his scouting report, go see that. But, yeah, he is dynamic with the puck on his stick, too. Probably not as much as Demidov, but, oh, man. He makes some plays sometimes. He's very got very good high IQ and can, you know, shoot a puck. Had 54 goals. I mean, you're not scoring 54 goals unless you can wire puck. Look at that. Pick the short side there. So, yeah, that's a nice pickup by Montreal. I think they'd be really happy with Berkeley Catton, actually. All right, number eight, Ottawa Senators. They get the big D from Russia, Anton Selayev. And I don't know if they would take a D in this position. I'm, you know, this is where... I'm thinking they probably would look for high-end forward because they got some pretty good young D. They got, uh, what's his face, Clevin, Sanderson, Brandstrom. So, you know, they got some pretty good D already. But, I mean, hey, if you want to take a six foot seven D who is, you know, very good defensively, and he had 11 points in 62 games, played the entire season in the KHL, the top men's rushing league. But look at this, pushing guys off the puck. That's what Anton Salayev does. And I got a scouting report on him, too, so if you want to check that out. But anyways, he's 
He's really good defensively. I mean, not really good, but he's good. He's good defensively. Uh, he started the season on a tear, had like 11 points in his first, you know, 15 games or something like that. But then he kind of slowed down, obviously, and ended up, you know, kind of plateauing there early on. But nevertheless, he's still, you know, six foot seven. He can skate really well, and he's good defensively. So that's a nice pickup by any team for sure. All right. Like I said, if you want to see the scouting reports, just go to the homepage, NHL Draft Pros. I got a bunch sitting there to be watched. Okay, number nine, Buffalo. And they got some really, really good D in the system, more like offensive D. So I don't know if they'd go with Zane Parekh here. So this is where I'd probably maybe switch out. Ottawa might go with Zane Parekh or a, a high-end forward. Um, I think that Buffalo would probably more be more inclined to take Anton Selayev. They're looking for more of a defensive D, but uh, you know, or a forward. But hey, you can't go wrong either way. Zane Perak now look at these numbers. 96 points. Yes, he's a D. 96 points in 66 games in the OHL for Saginaw. And they are hosting the Mem Cup this year. So you know he's going to be focused on for sure come playoff time. And he's doing really well in the playoffs already too. But he is an offensive defenseman. That's what Zane Parekh. And you know what? I have to admit, though, he did improve his defensive game over the season. And he's another one that I watch on a frequent basis. Because one of my buddies plays for Saginaw. His kid, I should say. So I, I, I've been to a lot of games. And I have to admit, he has progressed defensively this year, which is really impressive. And he got, you know, thirty over 30 goals this year. He had over 20 goals. That was a record last year. And But, you know, dishing it off now. He's, he's become a very good passer this season. And that is trouble for other teams. So, yeah, you know what, Zane Parekh, I don't know if he'd go to Buffalo, but that's a nice pickup nevertheless. All right, number 10, Seattle. They get Zeev Booyam. Yes, that's a nice pickup by Seattle. They're kind of in need of a defenseman. And Zeev Booyam checks off all the spots. He's got 48 points in 39 games for the University of Denver. And he's another one. Great 200-foot game and obviously has some offensive touch. And I, I liked his play at Denver. He he definitely, you know, showed that he could be a big time player. And he and he has been. And even he played for the World Juniors for USA and was the youngest te- uh, player on the team. And by the end of the, the tournament, he was getting big minutes. So he definitely has arisen in the draft rankings all season long. But he plays well defensively, too, and uh, showing some hits right here. So yeah, he likes to take the body. He's not, you know, he's not afraid to muck it up in the corner or in front of the net. He's got a little edge to him. I like, I like Zeev Boyum a lot. So he goes to Seattle. All right, number eleven, San Jose with their next pick again in the first round here, and they end up, you know, best available player uh, at this point. You're getting Constant Hellenius. That's not a bad pick. I, I might pick someone else, but Constant Hellenius right here. You can see he's got some offensive touch, and you know he had 36 points in. 54 games in the Liga, which is the top men's finish league. So he's definitely, you know, got some offensive touch to his game. I, I would consider him more of a, you know, an overall well at everything. 200-foot player. He, he's got a good motor. He's always, you know, got a good pace to his game, I guess you could say. He's always moving on the ice. Got some decent hands. Nice shot. So, yeah, you know what? He, he's a really good player. I don't know personally if I'd have him this high, but we're going to, you know, Go with Tankathon, and they got him at 11. So now, number 12. Here's a, this one right here. Carter Yakemchuk plays in the dub in the WHL for Calgary. And you know what? He's been climbing the draft rankings. Now, this is a big kid. He's six foot three, you know, 190 pounds. So, and New Jersey. New Jersey's going to get this player, and he is he's really good. And, man, if New Jersey picks this guy up, they got Nemets, Casey, Hughes, you know, their top four would be pretty dangerous, actually, if they picked up Carter Yakemchuk. And now this kid has got a wicked shot. He had 30 goals this year as a defenseman. And his hands, like, he's so slick with the puck. He's so slick with the puck. Uh, could work on his defensive game a little bit, but I, I, I'll, I'll go over that when I when I do video on him. But you know what? He's, a, he's, he's an interesting guy. And he's a right-hand shot. If you watch my videos, you know that the NHL love right-handed D. And watch this little, he, he just walks in. He's got the confidence. When he's got the puck on his stick, he's definitely confident. And he moves around the ice really well for a big kid. So Cartier Kemchuk is a great, great pickup by New Jersey at 12. Okay, moving on. 
We got the New York Islanders at number 13. And look out, look who they got lucky. Tij Aginla. Yes, the son of Jerome Aginla. And he is a great, great player. Another one that kind of flew up the charts this year. Look at this. 47 goals in 64 games, 84 points overall. Let me tell you something. And he's doing really well in the playoffs right now, too. He has been on fire lately. And he can rip a puck. Watch this. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. So, you know, the Islanders, they're kind of in no man's land right now. Do they rebuild or do they, you know, try to kind of retool and whatnot? But picking up Tij Aguinla is a great, great pickup. And I think that their their prospect pool is a little weak right now, I would say. But he's got Tij Aguinla has, you know, like I said, he's a, he's a great shooter, has some decent hands, and and he's and he's a hard worker. He's a hard worker too. I, I, I really enjoy his game, to be honest with you. And I can't wait to do a video on him. But this is a great pick. This would be a great pickup by the Islanders. At number 13. All right, moving on. Now we got number 14 and the Detroit Red Wings doing a pretty good rebuild so far. And they are lucky in landing Liam Greentree. Liam Greentree is one of my favorite prospects in this draft. I think he's underrated. I get to watch him a lot. And let me tell you something. He's got some hands and he's on a bad team. The, the Windsor Spitfires, they're kind of on a rebuild. And he had 90 points in 64 games. He pretty much carried the team. I I can't say that. I can't say that. He He, he was definitely important on the team, though. There's another kid on that team, Cole Davis, that I like a lot. But anyways, uh, Liam Greentree, he's got some hands. He's big. He's 6'2". He's, he's got to get a little stronger on, on his on his skates. But let me tell you something. He's got some hands. He's got some hockey IQ. He can pass. He can stick handle. He can shoot. This would be an amazing pickup by the Red Wings. And you know what? Being close to Detroit and Windsor's right across from Detroit, I bet you that the, you know, the, the Detroit scouts would head over here a lot and watch him play. So... It kind of makes sense almost, and this would be a, an amazing pickup at number 14, Liam Greentree from the Windsor Spitfires. All right, moving on, number 15, we got Michael Branside Negard, and that's Minnesota that's going to pick him up. That's a nice pickup as well. Minnesota, pretty young team, pretty pretty good team, and Negard had 18 points in 41 games in the Swedish second league, men's league. And let me tell you something. This is another one. He can shoot the puck. He's got some good motor. He kind of reminds me of Constantinus. I put these two in the same kind of category. Power forward-ish, responsible, 200-foot game. But, you know, you can't go wrong with a player like Michael Negar. I like him. He's a mid-first, in my opinion, so this kind of fits in well. And he's kind of like a Minnesota player, to be honest with you. It, it, he fits the mold, we'll say, when it comes to the wild. So this is this would be a really nice pickup by uh, Minnesota at 15. All right, and then the last pick of the lottery is to St. Louis, and they're getting Igor Chernyshov. So he, he's another one that is he, he, very similar game to Michael Brandsag Nigard and Constellanius. He had 28 points in 22 games in the MHL. He actually did play a handful of games in the KHL, but he, you know he didn't do too much there. But against his peers, he's pretty good. And he's got some motor to his game. He's got some physicality to a game. He can shoot the puck. Decent, great skater, actually, I should say. He's a really good skater. I like his I like his overall game. And so, you know, a nice pickup by St. Louis there. You can't go wrong with a player like Chernyshov. And that's it from Tankathon. Look at that. I love it. You know what? Head to Tankathon. Check that out. So here's the, the top 16 that I just talked about, just to give you an idea. But head over to Tankathon, and like I said, not only the NHL, but they got all the other, you know, NFL and NBA and all that fun stuff. So it's fun to, to you know, every once in a while I'll go on there and run some simulations and some mock drafts. So, and that's it for this video. Please subscribe, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.